Vamos lá. Debbie here and this is my video on kids now I'm a little bit uh, scared to make this video only because I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing or not convey how great it is to have kids but um, I just have to do the best I can as always I do the best with what I have and this is what I have right now now first let me say that I love my two daughters and my three granddaughters very, very much. They range from age to, let's see, the oldest one is 45. The next one's 44. Those are my two daughters. And um, my granddaughters are 19, I'm sorry, 27, 19, and 9. So they're quite far apart, but... um. They're all very different. My daughters are very different, although they grew up in the same household. And um, my granddaughters are very different also. Um, the nine-year-old, of course, I'm getting, still getting to know her. But um, I have to say all in all that, um, that I always wanted to have children, that I don't regret having my children. But just because I don't regret having them, and love them very, very much, that does not mean that it's been an easy journey or um, or that uh, there have been a lot of challenging situations. Now, the most difficult thing about being a parent, I must say, is the worrying. The worrying will kill you. <laughs> um, because it's always a fine balance of trying to know when to step in and when to step back. Now, I'm talking about good parents. I'm not talking about people that have kids and then um, let them run wild and, you know, make their own lives and uh, what, whatever, you know, whatever happens to them is their problem, not yours. I'm not talking about those parents. I'm talking about the good parents, okay? Now, if anything I say, if you are the exception to anything I say, that's fine. Good for you, wonderful. I'm talking about my experience and what I've seen. So, um, my parents, my mom and dad, were very hands-off. I mean, they had us, they fed us, they sheltered us, and, you know, and uh, kicked our butts when we stepped out of line. But besides that, they had no interest in our um, desires or, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? All the natural things a parent would ask. They were very, both very narcissists in that sense. So that's, the, that's not the kind of parenting I'm talking about. I'm talking about my kind of parenting, my kind of parenting where you, you are the guide in your child's life. When you know, you're, you're teaching your child how to navigate life. That's the kind of parenting, parenting that I believe in. Okay. When you're taking your child into a preschool for the first time and on the way there you're driving, you turn off your radio, turn off his little whatever gizmo he's playing with and explain to him or her not to be scared, that this is a new environment, you're going to have a lot of fun, um, this is what people do, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you just really try to help them the best you can navigate life. I remember that... Um, 
when my youngest daughter, when she went to sixth grade, she was very afraid to go into this new school, new neighborhood. So I would park my car and get out and we would walk around the block a couple of times um, before she went into the school. Of course, I had to be at work. But um, I took that time because I wanted to comfort her. I just didn't want to dump her off and leave her there to fend for herself. So I, um, I want, and to this day, she remembers that with um, great joy. Now, mind you, it is very aggravating when they don't listen to you, but, um, but basically what I'm trying to say, children are a lot, a lot of work. You have to um, get up every morning, whether you feel like it or not, give them breakfast. Like I said, I'm talking about good parenting. I'm not talking about lazy parenting where you lay in bed when they're already up and, um, you know, you let them climb up on the counter and get their own cereal and stuff. No, I'm talking about good parenting. I'm talking about parenting where you're up when they are. You make sure, you know, you, you make sure you're up when they are because you don't want them to open the front door to anyone, okay? Sure, you'll tell them not to, but they'll do it anyway. Uh, you make them a nice breakfast. You enjoy the time with them. Let's say they're watching cartoons. You're on the couch with them. Okay, maybe, you, maybe you'll go to sleep. I never did, but let's say you go to sleep, but you're right there by them. You're making sure they're safe. That's top priority. Um, parenting is, the bottom line is parenting is living their life as they go along life. When they get depressed, you get depressed. When they um, are mad with their boyfriend, you try to, you know, you have to go through that whole drama of uh, explaining to them why they shouldn't be heartbroken. Uh, everything, you know, when their grades are low, you try to help them. I mean, you're basically living their life too. And that takes up probably about, I would say, to be honest, 95% of your life. <laughs> if not 90% of your life. That's that's if you have any life at all. Now, I didn't have any life. I lived and died for my girls, up and down, you know, just whatever. Um, and then sometimes when they grow up, they'll turn around and try to give credit to the other spouse for everything you did for me. You're like, no, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not sharing the glory of what I did because that other person fought against me to do anything at all. That other person didn't want me to do anything for you. Anything fought me tooth and nail for you not to take ballet classes or tap dance classes or anything. So I'm not going to share the credit. And you get in this big argument with that person, <laughs> with that kid. Um, kids can be very, very ungrateful, okay? They can be very ungrateful. They will grow up and um, most of the time they won't call you. They'll only call you if they need something. Um, if they're like, you know, I don't know, need a babysitter, need um, some money or anything. They need something. They need somebody to talk to. They will call you. But will they call you out of the blue just to see how you are? Usually not. I mean, that's the truth. I was a very, very good mother. I, th I would say I was the best. Did I make major, major mistakes? Yes, but I do believe that I did my best with what I had. And I feel comfortable about that. And, um, yeah, my kids very rarely call me. Very rarely. And I live alone with my cat and dog. And I'm okay. I don't call them and say, I'm lonely. But, you know, sometimes it does get a little uh, taxing. So if, if you're going to see, and you can't, like, hold them back because it can become detrimental to them. I know someone that um, her son tried to leave home. And uh, she made him feel so guilty about it. How are you going to leave me and your dad alone? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that is. I mean, I keep, my toilet keeps leaking. That, that is not what you think it is. No. I don't know what that is. That's something leaking out of the thing. Anyway. Um, but she made him feel so bad, bad about leaving that he didn't leave. He ended up not leaving and uh, he ended up 
drinking himself to death in his room. He drank until his kidneys failed and then he died. That's awful, you know? No, I don't want that. I don't want my kids with me if it's detrimental to them. So if you're going to have children, if you want to have children because you want them to keep you company, you're doing it for the wrong reason. And it, it was horrible. But I hung in there. I never gave up on them, even though, well, I'm not even going to say, even though he told me to. But, um, yeah, I never, never gave up on them. And um, today they're wonderful, productive women. Good mothers, too. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is that, yeah, it was hell. Did I sign up for that when I became a parent? When I decided to have children? No. Did not sign up for that. So just like anything, just like anything, there's good, there's bad, there's ugly. Um, a lot of times when you get into a career, you don't think that it's going to be, you know, as bad as you thought. I mean, a lot of times when you start a new career, you have all these illusions of, oh my gosh, it's say nursing. There's a funny nurse on TikTok that makes videos about how delusional it's been to, to be a nurse. What a dissolution it's been for her. She's still a nurse, though. But what I'm saying is, do things rarely turn out the way we want them to? So, I'm just trying to give an accurate picture of parenting, okay? I'm not saying it's like this for everyone, but I'm just saying that. Now, am I disillusioned? Am I sorry for having my kids? Absolutely not. I love those girls. But I do realize that I bit off, uh, I don't know if I bit off more than I could chew. Uh, yeah, because I didn't know what, what I was doing half the time. And my mom provided no guidance, and my dad was not even there, so, yeah, I mean, it was hella hard. But let me tell you something, um, it's decision that has to, once you start being a parent, you can't stop. Now, another thing I've seen, too, is that uh, I've seen people that have, have had kids that, they, that are so different than them that they don't like, they don't like their own kids. That's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. I love my kids. I mean, I really do. I like them as people. I, um, I think we have to acknowledge that our kids are another human being. They're not a branch off of us. My daughters are, I guess their core is like mine, but we have a lot of different ideas. So, but don't expect your kids to be just like you, okay? Don't expect that because you're setting yourself up to fail. Don't um, put them in show business because you always want to be a, a star or make them model because you always want to model. We're all different human beings. A parent's obligation is to look at their child and see what their gifts are, not what your gifts are, not or not what you want their gifts to be. What are their gifts? And, uh, and help them enhance those, develop them, enjoy them, to be there for something else. Now, if you can't come out of yourself to be a guide for another person, then don't have kids. Don't have kids. Because it's not about you. It's not about your wants and needs. It's about the child. What's best for the child? Um, holding them hostage from their dad because you're getting a divorce is not good for the child. It's not good for their, you know, mental health. Um, if the child is different than you are, or if they're going in, in a direction that you feel is detrimental to them, it's your obligation to guide them back or to reason with them or to give them different options than what they're doing. It is not um, your responsibility to punish or torture that child. And if you don't want to take care of the child, give it to the authorities where they can take care of it. Hopefully they'll find a loving home. But um, Now, as far as not having children, I really don't recommend some women get pregnant, get an abortion, get pregnant, get an abortion, get pregnant, get an abortion. Don't do that. Don't do that. Either if you really don't want to have children, please go get a procedure done where you cannot have children. 
take your ability to have children out or um, have yourself fixed. Men, you can have, men can have a vasectomy that is, is very uh, minor surgery. And my husband, my ex-husband had one after we had our second daughter. And uh, they still function fine sexually. So that's a very, very good option for men. <clears throat> but yeah, don't put your body through that. Don't put other people through that. Um, if you can help it, don't have an abortion. Just, you know, don't have kids. Don't get pregnant. Uh, use double birth control. If he uses birth control and you use birth, birth control before having sex, then you probably shouldn't get, you probably won't get pregnant. But I, ha but I really have to tell you, too, that, um, that children will give you such a joy and such a happiness. That's why I love working with children. They will give you a happiness you've never known. They'll make you laugh with their tenderness and idiosyncrasies, and they're just wonderful. They're just such a joy. that They make you, they make you feel like nothing else has made you feel. Uh, exuberant, wonderful love. And it's a, um, it's a love that knows, love knows no bounds. They're very, very um, wonderful. There's a lot of moments that I remember, I remember when my daughters at a, God, they were just, uh, I remember one time I was going to work and uh, my oldest daughter was at the kitchen window by herself and she was waving to me goodbye. Oh God, still, I still remember that. It just breaks my heart because I had to go to work. I was the main breadwinner of my family. So, um, didn't sign up for that either, but anyway, I did what I had to for my daughters. Um, but yeah, I would say that uh, they do fill up your heart a lot and um, it really fills my heart to help them out whenever they need me. But they will break your heart like nothing else, you know. They can. I don't say they will. They can break your heart like nothing else in this world, okay? So just know that. Just know that. It's not all. And then and then there's a little ins and outs of every day. What do you feed the kid? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, Tommy's growing out of his shoes. Oh, Lord, now we got to buy another pair of shoes. Um, it's constantly looking, constantly putting them first, if you're a good parent, constantly putting them first. I never had my nails done until my daughters were grown. God, I think they were in their 30s. <laughs> I started having my nails done. Um, yeah, it's just, it was all about them all the time. And I loved it that way. And I would do, still, still do the thing. I would take more time for myself, I'm sure. But... For me, they were the priority, always the priority. Making sure they lived in a good environment, making sure that um, after the riots in LA, the LA riots, we moved to a, a suburb outside of Los Angeles that was better. I got my girls out of there. Um, yeah, it was always about them and what was best for them. And the, and the irony of that is that my youngest daughter, she was really mad that we had moved from South Central Los Angeles to Santa Clarita. She uh, she told me that I was very selfish and that I was very uh, self-centered for moving them and that, you know, it was all about me, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, okay, Jamie, okay. I just put up with it because I said to myself, she's not going to... I tried to explain to her, but she wasn't having it, okay? So... Years later, she thanked me for moving them because half of their friends were dead and uh, half of their friends had been injured. One of them was in a wheelchair. The little boy they used to play with when they were kids was in a wheelchair. There's hard decisions parents have to make for their kids, and a lot of times you catch backlash. So, um, yeah, but all that combined, it is a job and a half, okay? So if you don't feel like you're up to it, if you don't feel like you can come out of yourself, to live another person's life and uh, and really cater to them and be there for them in every moment, don't be a parent. That's all there is to that. You do have choices. Don't be a parent. 
I hope this doesn't sound too depressing, but that's the reality of things. And nobody will tell you that because everybody tell you, oh my, oh, so and so, oh, he's so wonderful. We just had the greatest time. And people are very hypocritical and very um, phony. Very, very phony. So I'm just telling you what being a parent really is. It's very rewarding. Very rewarding. And then grandkids are like, no oh, shit. Grandkids, I love grandkids, and but you still, uh, you still go through their lives to a little more distance because you're not immediately responsible for them. But yeah, but sometimes you 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 may lose a child; they may die before you do. That's horrific. Um, they may commit suicide, like my nephew. That was horrific. Um, anything can happen. I'm not telling you to live in fear. I'm just telling you the possibilities. Just know that it's like anything else. It has its ups and downs. Just know that. Can you handle that? Can you handle that? And if you get married and have children, you know, I, I pray, I hope and pray that you have a wonderful, successful marriage. But if you do have, get a divorce, those children, children are forever. They should be forever. You shouldn't ever choose anyone over your children. No boyfriends, no parents, nothing. You should never choose anyone over your children. Unless your kid's like this rock devil that, you know, that's in and out of jail and you just can't, uh, you know, fix. Uh, I know someone like that too. There was a guy that was, um, he was a... Uh, related to a co-worker of mine and he was in and out of jail all the time and his parents he finally got killed unfortunately and uh, well and and um, yeah his mother goes to his grave every day and cries I mean it's it's something you know it, it is definitely hard to be a parent I, I admire anyone that hangs with and sometimes, yes, you do have to turn your back on your child when they just refuse to not to, to get off drugs and are constantly robbing your house, if that's the case. So yeah, it, it, it really is. It's a hard journey, but it's also very rewarding when the kid graduates from college. And if you're lucky enough, they will care enough about you to check on you, to come visit you, to call you and uh, be there for you, but don't count on it. The best way to go in is don't count on it. If you get it, what a bonus. But don't count on it. Okay, I hope I wasn't too negative. I'm a very realistic person. Anyway, appreciate what you already have, and um, I hope this helps someone. That's why I make these videos. God bless God.